Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to So Custom. Today's video, as you will have already seen from the thumbnail, is how I sewed up this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is a cotton shirting. Very lightweight but quite structured, so good for a project like this. And on to the cutting out. I have two pattern pieces for my front, one that will run down the centre and one at the side. Two layers of fabric underneath each. And the first thing to do here is to join my centre front with my centre back at the shoulder. So on to the back. Same thing here again, I have two pattern pieces, one for the centre, this one is cut on the fold, a little notch at the fold line on the neck, and then I have two layers of fabric underneath my side piece. So now that these are all cut out, I'm ready to join my centre back with my centre front at the shoulder. My fabric is right sides together, and ready to sew. So I just need to tidy up that edge and give that seam a nice press, which you can see I've went ahead and done here. So now this piece is ready for my pleats. I have two layers of folded fabric underneath my pattern piece, a little notch on the fold line at the centre. So I have a little bit of prep work to do here before I can pleat this fabric down, and that is to finish the hem. So I'm going to do a very narrow folded hem here, so folding that raw edge in underneath and pressing, folding again and giving myself a good crease line. I'll finish that off camera and ready to stitch. So I've given that a press and now that that's done, I'm ready to start pleating. And in order to pleat, I've made myself a pleating tool. So I followed a fantastic tutorial by the lovely Diane Dazelle in order to make this tool. I shall leave it linked in the description box below. So to pleat my fabric down, I'm just going to fold it over each of those little ridges I have in my tool. So lifting up the ridge, pressing my fabric from the middle outwards, making sure everything's nice and flat, and repeating. And once I have four or five pleats done, giving my fabric a good bit of heat and steam. Using my clapper here to help to press the fabric down and absorb some of that moisture. And I'm just going to repeat that process as far as my tool will allow. So I've just come to the bottom of my tool. I have a little bit more pleating I need to do, but before I can do that, I need to allow those pleats above to cool down completely before I remove them. So some time has now passed, my fabric is completely cold, so I'm just releasing the pleats at the bottom, giving myself a little bit more room on the tool to pleat that last little bit. And I'll do the same thing here as I did above, give that freshly pleated fabric some heat and steam 
and allow it to cool. So that's that done. So now the very satisfying job of releasing the pleats from the tool. Super happy with this. And now the very last thing I have to do before I can add this to my bodice is just to run a stay stitch along that raw edge to hold those pleats in position. So stitching here within my seam alliance using a little bit of a longer stitch length. Back stitching to start. And back stitching to finish. And of course I've repeated that entire process, which you can see here. So now these are ready to be added to my bodice front and back. My fabric is right sides together, lining up that centre notch with my shoulder. And ready to stitch. Same thing again here, stitching within my seam alliance. Using a little bit of a longer stitch length, back stitching to start and to finish. So that's my pleats all tacked into place and now that that's done I'm ready for my side front and back. So the first thing to do here is to join those together at the shoulder. My fabric is right sides together and ready to stitch. So I finish that edge, press that seam and this is the result. And now that that's done, these pieces are ready to be joined to my front and back. So lining up my shoulder seams, my fabric is right sides together, lining up my edges the whole way along, and pinning. Ready to stitch, sewing this time at my 1cm seam alliance, using a regular stitch length, starting and finishing with a back stitch. finished off that seam on the overlocker and given it a good press, which you can see here. My pleats are nicely sandwiched in between. Super happy with this. So now that that's done, I'm ready for my placket pleats. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece and the preparation for these pleats is slightly different to that of the shoulder pleats. So for this one, I just want to fold it along its length, give myself a nice crease line in the centre. And now that that's done, I'm ready for pleating. So leaving about a centimetre on the top unpleated. And then just following all the same steps as I did with the shoulder flounce before. And off camera I've pleated down my second piece, I've allowed them to cool and this is what I get. Happy with that. So I've got that lovely clean folded edge all pleated down nicely. So now to run that same tacking stitch as I did before along that raw edge. 
tacked into place, I'm ready to add these to my centre front. Lining up my edges across the collar, down the centre front. And ready to stitch. Sewing within my seam allowance again, back stitching. Starting at the bottom of my pleats, little pivot at the neck, and finishing with a back stitch. So that's that done. And of course, I do exactly the same on the other side, which you can see here. They've had a press, and now that that's done, I'm ready to take care of my hems. So I'm using the same finish here as I did on the shoulder pleats. So folding that raw edge in underneath, pressing, folding again, and pressing. I'll finish that off camera. Ready to stitch. Back stitching to start, using a little bit of a longer stitch length. and finishing with a back stitch. So that's one side of my front done. Off camera, I've done the other side of my front and my back. They've had a press and this is how they look. Happy with that. So now that that's done, I'm ready for my placket. I have two layers of folded fabric underneath my pattern piece. So I have a little bit of prep work to do on these pieces before I can add them to my bodice. So the first thing to do is to add a tiny bit of structure. So this is a very lightweight cotton interfacing I'm using, lining it up with that crease line and pressing into place. And the second bit of prep work is just to fold in my seam allowance on one side and press into place. So that's that done. And then the last bit of prep work I have to do is just to close up that hem edge. So folding my fabric back on itself at that centre crease, making sure that seam allowance is on top and ready to stitch. Stitching here at my one centimetre seam allowance, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So I've turned my fabric right side out and given it a press. And that completes the prep work I need to do for my placket. So laying my placket over my bodice, wrong side of bodice to right side of placket, lining up my edges and pinning. And stitching here at my one centimetre seam allowance, back stitching to start, and back stitching to finish. So to complete my placket, I'm just pressing those raw edges away from the bodice, laying that folded and pressed edge of the placket over the top of the line of stitches I've just sewn, and ready to stitch down. Starting at the hem with a back stitch, using a little bit of a longer stitch length, sewing as close to that crease edge as I can get, and finishing at the neck with a back stitch. So, of course, I've done exactly the same on the other side. They've had a good press. And now that that's done, I'm ready for my collar. So the first thing to do here is to prep my collar pleats. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a notch on the fold line, top and bottom. And the preparation for these pleats is slightly different again to the previous two. So the first thing to do here is to give myself a nice crease line right along the centre of my fabric. Done. And now to close up both ends. So just folding the fabric back on itself at that crease line, 
stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance. Back stitching to start and finish. So I've turned my fabric right side out and pressed. And now this piece is ready for pleating. So this time leaving out a couple of centimeters at each edge and then pleating as normal the whole way down. So my pleats have cooled and off camera I've just ran that seam tacking stitch along that bottom edge. And now that that's done, I'm ready for my collar. I have two layers of folded fabric underneath my pattern piece, a notch at the centre of both pieces, top and bottom, and a shoulder notch. So just like my placket before, the first thing to do here is to add a little bit of structure to one of those pieces. And now that that's done, I'm ready to add those pleats. So lining up those notches at the centre, lining up my edges. And ready to stitch. Sewing within my seam allowance again, just tacking these pleats to my collar, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So that's my pleats all tacked into place and off camera I've just pressed up my seam allowance on my second collar piece and here just laying it on top right sides together, sandwiching my pleats in between and pinning into place. Ready to stitch, back stitching to start, taking this nice and gently, trying to maintain that gorgeous curve along the collar's edge, stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance. Same thing on the other side, a few little pivots there and finishing with a back stitch. So I just need to trim down that seam allowance. So I'm taking off here about two thirds. And I'm pressing that trim seam allowance to one side in preparation for under stitching. stitching through one side of the collar through that trim seam allowance and I'm about a millimetre or two away from the pleats using that little bit of a longer stitch length starting and finishing with a back stitch. So that's my collar fully prepped I've given it a good press, which you can see here. And now that that's done, this piece is ready to be added to my bodice. So laying it right side of collar to wrong side of bodice, lining up my centre notch, my shoulders, and my centre front, and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimetre seam allowance. and finishing with a back stitch. And off camera, I've trimmed down that seam allowance in exactly the same way as I did before. And here, just pressing that trim seam allowance towards the inside, folding that crease edge over the top, and ready to stitch down in exactly the same way as I did the placket before. 
starting with the back stitch, sewing as close to that crease edge as I can get, using a little bit of a longer stitch length, and finishing with the back stitch. Also pinned my top placket to the bottom, ready to mark where my buttons will be, using my fabric pen and popping a dot in right at the centre of each of those buttonholes. So that's that done. And this is how it looks once my buttons are sewn on. Super happy with this. And now that that's done, I'm ready to close up my side seams. So laying my back over my front, my fabric is right sides together and ready to sew. Stitching here at my 1cm seam alliance, starting and finishing with a back stitch. So once that seam has been tidied on the overlocker and pressed, this is how it looks. thing I have to do is to finish off my armholes and for this little top I've decided on a bias finish so I've cut myself a strip of super lightweight cotton. I folded my seam alliance at one end in underneath and here just lining it up with that underarm seam. My fabric is right sides together stitching at my one centimeter seam alliance. Coming round here to my starting position laying the end of that bias over the top of the folded edge and stitching through all layers, finishing with a back stitch. And off camera I've trimmed down that seam alliance, I've pressed it away from the bodice, so in exactly the same way as I did the collar before, I've placed my needle through the bias, through that trim seam alliance in underneath, about one or two millimetres away from the bodice, using a little bit of a longer stitch length, starting and finishing with a back stitch. So that's my bias understitched. Now to take care of that raw edge. So I'm just folding it in underneath, pressing, folding again and pressing. stitching here right along that inner crease edge using that same longer stitch length starting and finishing with a back stitch. So the very last thing to do here is just to give my bias a final press and with that this little top is complete. So I have those gorgeous pleats sandwiched into my princess seams, that lovely bit of pleated trim along my placket, got my collar all in place complete with trim, my buttons right down the centre front, my double folded hem with that nice curved edge, and those same princess seams on the back. And this is what it looks like on. So this was my first time using that pleating tool and I 
could not be more pleased with how it has worked. To make the tool itself, it takes a good bit of time, but for me, so well worth it. This opens up a whole new world of trims and designs. For this blouse though, I absolutely love the fit. I love all of the details. If you've been following along on Instagram, you will have seen the inspiration for this. My version is very much pared down from that, but for me, it suits me so much better. Love how this has turned out. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you guys on Friday. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye, folks. <laughs>